Welcome to the Skeleton Crew. I'm your host, Jen Callahan, a technologist with 10 plus years experience. In each episode, we will explore the fast-paced, ever-changing, and sometimes completely crazy field of radiology. We will speak to technologists in all modalities about their careers in education, the educators and leaders who are shaping the field today, and the business executives whose innovations are paving the future of radiology. We're here today with a longtime friend and colleague, Ashley Marciano. She worked with me previously at a hospital in X-ray, and then from there, she transitioned into interventional radiology um, as a technologist and has been working at Riddle Hospital for the past few years. Today, she's joining us to talk about what an interventional radiology technologist does how she came to that point in her career. And we're going to cover what she does for her job. If she knew then what she knows now, would she choose to do anything differently? And then in part three, we'll wrap things up just by asking her some fun questions about herself and what she thinks about the path that she chose. So welcome, Ashley. Thank you so much for being here with me. Thank you for having me. Such an honor. So Ash, if you could um, just give our listeners here, like maybe like a one minute synopsis of what an IR tech does. Okay, so an IR tech is meant to be the assistant to the doctor doing the procedure. It's kind of what we call a first scrub to the doctor. When we say scrub, that means us getting our sterile gown and gloves on, our mask on, and helping them with the procedure by handing them the tools that they need to do that procedure. Basically, it is our job to try to know what their next step is so that we can kind of work like a well-oiled machine together. You know, typically that's like learning on the job. You know, you typically get cross-trained into that. So you start to learn all the different procedures like line placements and ports and drains and internal bleeding to stop that. So you're basically just there to help the doctor with the case in terms of making sure that they have the proper equipment. You know, sometimes you're like holding pressure for them or you're getting everything ready for them that they need um, for the case. So that's basically what you do as a scrub tech. And just to back up for a second, for people who might not know, interventional radiology is used for a less invasive way to do things with inside the body. Patients are usually awake during these procedures. They are given conscious sedation, which is sometimes they'll consider it like twilight where they give you like a pain meds and sedation. Right. But it's just so that they're like relaxed enough that they're not going to feel right. That's right. So they can't feel any pain. They kind of relax. A, A lot of people do end up falling asleep, but it's not general anesthesia where that is a tube down your throat and you're giving propofol for that. And so they're using x-ray in these procedures to guide them through the body without having to open the body up to do things like Mm -hmm. place uh, like a a port for chemo or place, as you were saying, like a line into one of like the veins or arteries to administer like medication or something just for people who might not know. It's definitely um, like another world that people don't really know too much about. I think when people hear like surgeries or procedures, they just think it's the same thing where it's like a basic, like you're given anesthesia and you're getting cut open. (laughs) You know what I mean? In this case, we don't like to cut people open. So yeah, it's just another route to take versus doing something very invasive, which is to um, actually cut somebody in and get in there. So since you and I have worked like initially with each other, excuse me, Ashley and I were in x-ray with each other. And when I was leaving and you were kind of leaving at the same time, because you were going to be transitioning into IR at like another hospital. So since you and I have worked with each other since, geez, 2016, so crazy. So long, I know. Can you tell me like, have like, where have you gone? Like, so we were at Brandywine with each other. And since then, I'm pretty sure you've gone to two different hospitals doing IR. Right. Yeah. So after Brandywine Hospital, I stayed. Well, I was also with Hahnemann Hospital and I was there uh, for a very long time, like I think at least a decade or something like that. That's where I started my um, cross training in IR. I got very lucky at that time. IR was not typically keen on cross training people 
even though technically that was the way to get in, but a lot of people who had started in IR got it right from x-ray graduation. So you have to be in x-ray tech first before you can work in uh, interventional radiology, which I was. There just happened to be an opportunity where they said, we are willing to cross train. And I jumped at the opportunity because I did a rotation during my x-ray school program. And I really found it very interesting. And then with my experience from Hahnemann, I got a job, Riddle Hospital, Mainline Health System in Delaware County. And I did IR there as well. I still do. So now I'm solely doing interventional radiology at Riddle Hospital. So what was it about IR that attracted you? Like you said, doing the rotation, like through x-ray school, what was it about that drew you in? I think what drew me into it was in interventional radiology procedures, you use iodinated contrast that people know from like if they had a CAT scan and it went through their IV or something like that. It's the same thing that we use in interventional radiology, and it basically lights up either your arteries or your veins or your organs. And I thought that that was just so fascinating that you could see with just a quick picture what was going on in a person's body, good or bad. And the way that they used that technology and the contrast to fix the issues in that problem minimally, like invasively, that just impressed me. And I was like, I would love that, you know, just learning so many things about the body because all the systems in our body are all connected and that job makes everything come together in one picture. And that just fascinated me. It's incredible. And I'm still learning things today. I mean, there's still things that I'll see in a body in terms of maybe like a, a past surgery that they had and their the, whatever is in there, like a certain kind of stent or, or what have you. And I'll be like, what is that? And they'll be like, oh, that's this kind of stuff. And I'm like, why? I'm like, it's mind blowing, like to know that they had, they have these resources and, um, you know, medicine obviously has just become so advanced. So it's just, you're learning all the time. So since you transitioned into IR and you've been now working in the field for like probably close to seven years, X-ray were required at this point to, you know, you have to sit for your registry after you've graduated from um, a, a program that offers you an associate's degree at this point. As far as it goes for IR, are you required to sit for like an additional certification? Is it required, I guess, like maybe, or is it like hospital-based, you know, base by base, yeah. I should say? So this is actually very tricky because according to the ARRT, they had actually told me that it is hospital based, that it is not a state law, at least in the state of PA, to be certified. However, there are interventional radiology boards that you can take, that you can study for. Obviously, it's better if you're working in the field um, because you do have to have a certain amount of procedures done and proven and signed off. Mm -hmm. Um, before you take your boards. Um, But no, it is not required, at least in the state of PA. So you can take it yourself, which I haven't yet, and I would like to, and I've been in and out of studying for it, but it's, it's so much information. It's so hard. And if you don't do certain procedures all the time, it's hard to remember everything about it. Right. Um, But it is a goal of mine to do. Did you have to take the 10 year research? Like not I just did it last year. Mm -hmm. Right. So the tough thing is at this point for you, like if it's not required by your hospital for you to have the additional registry for IR, because if you took it now in 10 years, you're going to have to redo your x-ray and then also to the the IR. Yeah. Yeah. If you're listening currently and you're a prospective student and you think that this might be something that you're interested in, listen up, or if you are currently uh, working in x-ray or another modality, and you also too think that you might be interested in transferring or looking into IR as another career path for you, listen up as well. This episode is brought to you by xraytechnicianschools.com. If you're considering a career in x-ray, visit xraytechnicianschools.com to explore schools and to get honest information on career paths, salaries, and degree options. So Ash, if you could like walk me through like an average day of what your department looks like, you know, like you coming in and then to the end of the day, like what's your day look like? So basically when you come into work, you're looking at your cases for the day. So the procedures that are on the 
um, agenda. You go ahead and you look at the procedures for the patient's chart. You'll look in the patient's chart to see what they're having done and why they're having done. Typically in a interventional radiology lab, there is a charge person who it could either be a tech or a nurse who basically is running the day saying, we're going to be doing this case today, or I got to talk to the doctor about this, see if he wants to do this case and so forth. So typically you go to that person sometimes just to see what kind of the day is going to be like in general. When it gets to the point where they're like, okay, these are your cases, you look at your cases, for example, say like someone's getting a port a port for chemotherapy, and you want to look up what kind of cancer they have, because then that alters where you're going to be putting the port, whether it be on the right or the left side. So for example, if I'm getting ready to get this port on the table, I want to know, typically they like to put lines, any type of line placement on the right-hand side, because it's a shorter GPS route, if you will, from the IJ all the way to the the junction of your uh, right atrium. If they have right breast cancer, I would not want to put the port there because typically they would want to do radiation in that area. And so you would want to put the port on the left-hand side. So that's very important when you are looking at a port and seeing, okay, well, what kind of cancer is it? Am I going to be setting it up on the proper side? So when I'm getting ready for that port, I scrub. Now, I'm, when I say scrub, I mean you're doing the surgical scrub. You're going to the sink outside the lab. You're scrubbing, you know, uh, for at least two minutes. And there's a surgical scrub and it's got a sponge and then it's got things like bristles for under your nails. You do that for about two minutes. And then you go into the, into the lab without touching the door. So you kind of back in, like if you, if you have ever watched ER or maybe some people watch Grey's Anatomy, I don't know, I'm aging myself (laughs) here, but you know, you back into the doorway. Then you go ahead and you dry your hands with a sterile towel that is there and there's sterile gown and gloves. You put all that on. There is somebody else in the room to help you tie up because anything behind you is considered non-sterile. So after that, you're going to go ahead and set up your tray with all the proper tools there. Okay. Obviously before, I mean, I'll backtrack a second before I scrub in, after I figure out what the case is and what I'm doing, I will grab the supplies in the lab to see, uh, to, to have ready so that I can just dump on my tray and then get ready to do get ready to set it up. At that point, since I'm scrubbed now, I've got my sterile gown and gloves on. Now I set the tray up. Then at, after all that's done, I cover my tray up with a sterile cover and I wait for the patient to come in the room. When the patient comes in the room with the nurse, you know, we get the patient on the table, we hook them up to the vitals, such as like EKGs, pulse ox, oxygen, always going to give oxygen, obviously, when you're planning to do uh, conscious sedation uh, for the main reason of sedation, because it can uh, suppress your breathing. After we get the patient all set up, I go ahead, I scrub again at the sink, I scrub again, and then I walk back in without my hands touching the door, put my sterile gown and gloves on. I prep the patient with a sterile uh, prep stick, uh, like chlorhexidine prep stick. After I'm done prepping the patient and my tray is ready, we call the doctor in, okay? And then the doctor comes in and we do what's called, we call it a safety check, a timeout, basically stating what we're doing today who the patient is, make sure all of our ducks are in a row. And before we sedate the patient, we make sure the patient tells us their name and their date of birth and so forth. At that point, then we get started to do the procedure, which then I will first assist, first scrub the doctor. So I will be giving him the lidocaine. I'll be giving him the scalpel. I'll be giving him everything that he needs to finish the procedure. So basically that is what you do from like start to finish. You figure out what your cases are what cases you're going to be doing, and you look up the history on the patient, figure out what supplies you need um, moving forward. Obviously, every doctor is different. They all like different supplies. So it's going to totally depend on where you're working. Each lab is run differently. That's pretty much what your day is like as an interventional technologist. So since you've been in 
this department, I mean, besides like the actual like equipment that is used x-ray wise, um, mm -hmm. also to use ultrasound to yeah. do the different arteries or veins, sometimes mm -hmm. even different body parts that you'll use ultrasound for guided access. Looking at those two computer-based equipment, do you feel like in the seven or so years that you transitioned into IR, have you seen like advancements? I have seen advancements, yes. I have worked with older equipment and newer equipment. Um, the advancements that I have seen is that they have just made the screens bigger for doctors to see. They have made different like kind of uh, features so for example, when we're doing like a, an internal bleed and there's, you know, your body is just full of vessels, especially uh, when it comes to organs and such, there's a really easy feature. It's kind of like a roadmap. And I've seen the old school roadmap where it's like, you got a fluoro and then inject contrast and then your roadmap comes up. Now it's like, you can, you can do that, but then it can take away like the, it can take away the roadmap and put it back on. And, and I'll kind of explain to you what I mean. So when you step on the fluoro and you inject contrast, the computer will make a roadmap that looks like the vessel, but it's like the color white in the contrast of like gray. And back when I was working at Hahnemann, one of the machines that they had Anytime you wanted to take the roadmap off, meaning you were like, well, I don't want to see just the white anymore. Like I want to see the whole picture. If you wanted a roadmap again, you had to step on the pedal again and inject. Whereas the one that we use today, you don't have to keep injecting. Um, you can just with like the touch of like the joystick on the uh, controllers, you can actually take the white away and bring it back. So right. that they don't have to continue to give the patient contrast because ultimately contrast can be toxic, toxic to the kidneys. So it was like Siemens way of which probably Philip says the same thing, but I work primarily with Siemens. It's just a way of them saying, hey, you don't have to give the patient so much contrast. You can just have this feature and you can have the white of the roadmap or you can take it away all in the same at the same time. So mm -hmm. that I thought was very cool because you know once again it's patient safety ultimately so it's really nice to have that feature right so you're that not like re-injecting with more contrast and you're not right. like re-radiating just to get exactly yeah. exactly it makes a huge difference all right yeah. so real quick what's your favorite uh procedure to do in ir I think I like to do the Y90s, which is a type of chemo treatment that you give directly to the tumor in somebody's liver. You basically see the tumor like light up with the contrast and, and then, you know, you give like the medicine through that. And just that whole process is like that, you know, you give the chemo through it. I think like just seeing right, the eyes right in, like right in front of you, just like seeing that there's medicine going to the tumor to help shrink it. And it's not exactly a cure for the patient, but it just helps them feel more comfortable and you just feel like better about it. So you can do IR or x-ray for this question, but what is probably one of the weirdest or craziest things that's happened to you in your radiology career? So there was a patient in the ER uh, at Hahnemann. I had on this Reebok hoodie and there was a patient in the hallway who was being very difficult and not very compliant and just being very rude. And, you know, obviously the staff is there just trying to work their best with this guy. And we had like this nasty cut and I think they were just trying to get it like clean and, and, you know, so that it didn't get infected or whatever. And I said to the guy, well, geez, I'm like, I hope they fix your leg so it doesn't fall off or whatever. And he said, screw you and your stupid shirt. <laughs> and I just, I started laughing because I was like, it's so funny because it's the stupid that I made. <laughs> and to this day, I always look back at that with, with a laugh because I'm just like, yeah, it's, you know, city folk, it was the best, you know, and, and he didn't say screw you. He said something else, but you know, to me. <laughs> 
But that's it, though. I mean, like, I have to say it's one of the reasons why, like, I love this field, like, because you get people in, like, their truest, rawest moments. And half wow. the time that you meet someone out in public, you know, they're probably, like, not to say, like, you're always on your P's and Q's, but, yeah. but he's just yeah. like, dude, I'm in pain. And if you had to do it all over again, do you think you would choose the path that you've chosen, like, radiology? X-ray. I yeah, don't. so I'm definitely glad I chose what I chose. And the, and the funny story is I really wanted to get into ultrasound. And this is why it's amazing. Like I'm allowed out of my house without supervision. But like when I signed up for the Drexel program, I thought it was an ultrasound and an x-ray program. I'm, I'm out of control. So when I found out that it was just x-ray, I stuck with it and <laughs> like, I'm glad I did because had I not, I would have not had the experience that I have today and the wonderful opportunities and gotten to meet the most awesome people in the world. So yeah. I definitely am very lucky that I decided to stay in a program I didn't even know I was in. <laughs> uh, Ash, thank you so much for being with me, dude. I really appreciate it uh, that you yeah. took uh, your, your life to reconnect with me and to have this conversation. Oh, of course. You've been watching The Skeleton Crew, brought to you by xraytechnicianschools.com. On the next episode, join us to explore the present and the future of the RadTech career in the field of radiology.